happened. I remember when, even in the early days, when people would leave, I was very, I used to be very bitter. I used to be. Now you're talking. I used to be. Yes. Are you oh. here? Yes. You're so thinking, you, we've tried so I've, much. I've trained you, so much. You came here and I'm here train you. Hey. Why would you leave? Exactly. Hello everyone, my name is Oma Odike and you are watching Oma Scout. Please keep watching. Welcome to Oma Scout. I have on my couch today a Nigeria entrepreneur author and a lawyer. She's highly sought after for designing and delivering bespoke events. Bonus, her favorite thing is to dance. She's the founder and CEO of Zafaya Events, one of the leading event company in Nigeria. Your guess is as good as mine. She is Funke Buckner Obrute. Funke, I've admired you for a very long time and I'm sure you can't even imagine. I've loved your passion, your tenacity, and everything you do concerning your event planning business. But well, how can you explain to me how a lawyer who had actually practiced for some time in the industry started running a business of event planning? <laughs> oh, I never look back after 20 years. Whoa, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I said, it's a honor to be here. And I'm excited. I yes, mean, you look yes, fabulous. You. Love your hair, you. your outfit, everything is thank nice. You. So let me now go into my answer. So the truth is, um, for a long time, I mean, just growing up, you know, yeah. as a, um, a young child, you know, your parents will always ask you what you want to be. At that time, my generation, yeah. it was either you were a lawyer, you were a doctor, um, you know, an Accountant, architect, yeah, you know, engineer, yeah. etc. But I thought to myself, I even told my parents I wanted to study mass communication. Okay. But they said, oh, that wasn't going to happen. I had to choose a course that maybe reflected the yeah, professional, the professional nature. And then I started and I said, okay, you know what, I'll study law. And why did I want law? Because law didn't require me to pass math. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll study law. And then, of course, by the time I was getting into the University of Lagos, they required math. But luckily, I passed math. But anyway, I was in law. But while I was in uni life, while I was in university, mm -hmm. I just didn't really want to study this law. Okay. But I was there because my parents wanted, wanted me to. Too. And I yeah. thought, okay, you know what, I'm going to push you through. I will overcome this. Finish, finish yes. So I finished university, got into law school. I thought maybe in law school I would have this passion. I didn't have it. But while I was in law school, a few of my friends were getting married. You know, they was at that age. Yeah. We were like about 20, you know, just in our um, very early 20s. So they were like, oh, I'm going to get married after law school. They had met the loves of their lives. So I said, oh, can I help you? Can I help you sort this out? Okay, can I? Because I noticed that when people were getting married during my time, they were very stressed. I would attend my friend's sister's wedding. Everybody would be overwhelmed. The parents are yeah, overwhelmed. The bride and the family yes. are the ones planning everything. 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 They were just overwhelmed. Yeah. So I said, you know what, well, let me help you. So I started out with helping one of my friends with her Ashwabee okay. delivery. I helped another friend, you know, just coordinate her friends. So that's how I started. And that's how I started. Just immediately finished law school. But I still had to go and work. So because I thought I wasn't sure how do I continue with this, you know, maybe like profession. I made exactly, at that time, it no. wasn't popular. Didn't even, ask you, uh, there other event planners? At that time, it didn't even exist when wow. this was happening. So I went to, um, I told my parents, I went to a law firm. I stayed there for three weeks. Oh, just three weeks? Ah, uh, three <laughs> weeks. Wow. I don't stay there for three weeks. So there for three weeks. After three weeks, I now went to serve in an advertising agency. Okay. Because if you recall, I said I wanted to study mass communication. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me go to an advertising That's agency, agency and that may help me. So I went there and I, I, I had my youth service there. But while I was there, I was now helping all these, my friends, plan their events and do this. And then after a while, my cousin came to me one day and said, Funke, why don't you charge for this? You do this so well. Why don't you start charging? And that was how I just started. Wow. My friend's sister was getting married. My sister's, my friend's sister, yeah, my friend's sister. And I went, I charged, collected, you know, maybe 30k or 40k. She even paid <laughs> me extra 10k. I can never forget. Oh, and then that's how, that's how I started. Dream started. That's how I started. Interesting. Yes. Lovely. Funke, that's such a beautiful story. Please tell me more. We need to understand how you have been 
working in the event planning industry for so long, two decades and counted. <laughs> so we need to hear your story. I'm sure my so, viewers want to hear your story. Yes. Um, so I, I think the first thing is, I, you know, I told you that I saw a need. The need was people were stressed and I felt they needed help. So the first, you know, our first, I would even say slogan or our first byline was, you know, taking the stress off you. you. That was it. We just wanted to take the stress off our clients. So it was about taking the stress off them, making sure that they were not overwhelmed and things like that. But as the business grew and as business developed and, you know, as your market changes, you begin to realize that people did not just want you to take the stress off them. They also wanted you to create an experience. Mm. So from there, we now start, of course, you start building, you start looking at your business. You start looking at it in, 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 you know, in different ways. How do you even put structure? I, I was a very young girl. I didn't know anything. And, you know, at that time, I just thought I wanted to just make people happy. I had the passion, you know, but... Along the way, you know, when you have a lot of, when you have passion, you're young, hardworking, dedicated, energy. energy is there. You know, you need structure. You need, at a point in your business, you need to be able to put process in place. You need to think of, you know, the future, mm-hmm. things like that. So, but really, and it was also the gift of people. You know, you plan an event, you do it for somebody ex- extremely well. Somebody else refers Repairs. you. Mm-hmm. Somebody else recommends you. Mm-hmm. At that time, when we started, the w- wedding planning industry almost didn't exist. Parents didn't understand it. Why are we paying? For what? You know, but they had, the good thing was a lot of their children that had gone to school abroad were coming back to say, this happened abroad. Dad, you sent me here. I want to pay a planner. They may say, I, I'm not going to pay. Sometimes I know, I remember then I would go to a lot of my friends and say, you know what, pay me whatever you can. Wow. Because I wanted to build my portfolio. I wanted to build a profile. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? As, also, as long as I give you value, once I'm done and I give you value, refer me to the next person. Refer me to your parents. Refer me to well, anybody well, that needs the service. service yes. And that was how it was. That's how, you know, it just started growing and growing and growing. And then, of course, in the last 20 years, it's grown even almost beyond. Even and I'm thinking to myself, hello. <laughs> I, I didn't even imagine I would be like this. Because I didn't even really see this. At that time when I started, it was just, I just wanted to help people. And of course, different things started evolving and the industry has now become so huge, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a saying that when you actually pursue your passion, Mm -hmm. money comes after you. Yes. And I think that's really your your story is an example of that. Yes. But you've been in business for 20 years, in event planning, where people actually... In, in that industry, what we have seen is people will come and they will go. People mm-hmm. will come and they will go. They are popular today. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, they are no longer that important mm-hmm. or that relevant in the industry. Mm-hmm. But you've stayed relevant and also stayed on top of your game and actually one of the most sought-after event planners in Nigeria today and even beyond. Yes. How have you been able to innovate yourself time and time again to stay 20 years and you're still in the industry and still doing so well? Oh, I love, you know, I love this question. I absolutely love this question. It always, you know, just really, really makes me excited. Um, I would first of all say that the key thing is to even first of all understand what you want to do. What is the vision? What is the overall vision that you want for your business? And try as much as possible to ensure that you keep on going for that vision. Now, strategy, goals, they will change. Yes. But that vision, you know, where you are saying that you want to be the number one or you want to be the most sought after, you want to be an all-inclusive event planning company, you know, globally, not just Nigeria, globally. How do you make that happen and how do you continue to stay? So the first thing you mentioned, you said reinvention, constantly reinventing. Reinvention every single time. I remember at different phases of the business, we've been faced with different challenges, different you know, like almost like different um, um, problems you have to solve. You need to think ahead. Your market is constantly changing. changing. Yeah. When I started, I started out as a wedding planner. I was planning events for my friends, my peers, mm-hmm. my age mates. Yes. My age mates started growing older now. <laughs> they were not married again. Well, who was marrying their sisters? Yes. Okay. The younger ones, mm-hmm. the millennials, the Gen Zs. How do you appeal to the Gen Z's? How do you appeal? We knew, of course, we need to begin to study. What do they want? What, what are they, they looking like? for? Yes. You begin to market yourself to that. Because or else you're going to go extinct. That's number one. So, so were so, you changing your products? No. Products will not change. Okay. It is the way you deliver the products. 
So the way you're delivering the product, the way they see the brand, they want to see the brand as cool, trendy, yeah. fresh. But they're also looking for experience. Mm. They are looking for someone that has, you know, you um, spent the test of time. Someone that understands the nuances. You understand the parents. You understand the young ones. How do you balance it? So they're looking for that. So that is one. Now, we also didn't stay in just planning weddings. Yes. We started planning, of course, corporate events, mm. social events, lifestyle events. I just didn't stay there as well. We have a training school. We have a DECA company, a rental. So you have an academy? So, yes, we have an academy as okay. well. So just doing different things in the industry that is in the same ecosystem. ecosystem. You know, a lot of people think that, so oh, like exactly. People, everything. Exactly. People think, oh, to diversify, you have to go and do this. No, you no, do, no, no stay in the same. Yeah. So the same ecosystem, you're catering to different people. So we also have that. So reinvention, having different, you know, like different businesses and different markets the same in the same industry. space. Another one was building a team. <laughs> you see that team one? I realized early in the business that I needed people. And because you can't do it by yourself, you know, you talk about in any business about people, people process, you understand, and, and your product, you, you know. Yeah. So, it was for me, it was just about, you know, what people, you know, will make the business. How do I empower my team? How do I make sure that when people see my team, they see me? I had to build. So, it was about building a team, building a team that is like the, the Zafaya brand, the Zafaya DNA. So, how do you begin to instill that? You have to teach. You have to train. You have to allow them to make mistakes. Mm. Delegate. And allow people to mistakes. do their work. Oh, yes. Mistakes. Oh, yes. We're going to come. I'm sure we'll That's talk about it. We'll talk, yeah, we'll tell In you why. Ah, right? you have to make that. Uh, uh, easy, easy, easy. You know, I always <laughs> tell people that life Everything in life, there's no perfect company, no perfect human exactly. being. Exactly. But what mistakes do or what challenges does is it helps to build resilience. It helps to make sure that you never make yeah. that mis- mistake again. Mm-hmm. You have learned. Because I, myself as I am, I make mistakes. Of course. <laughs> so what do I do to make sure that I don't make the mistake again and things like that? So you allow them. Because you see, when you push people out there to go and run a business or to help you well, deal how, with your how, clients. How soon in the business cycle did you start empowering them to deal with the clients? I had to. I started this early on. Early on. I'm very hands-on. Okay. I love oh, my yes, work. I oh, I love my work. So, <laughs> I love it. I want to do everything by myself. <laughs> I want to. But I realize that, okay, you, you, cannot, do, you cannot do everything by yourself. Even if you love it. <laughs> so, I just said, you know what? Build the people. Build your team. Build, Build leaders. You know, give them what they need. Yeah. Expose them. You know, my people go for trainings internationally, locally. We have all that. You know, continue to. And then, of course, let them, give them their JDs. Give them the pro- process. Mm-hmm. Let them understand what they need to do at every point in time. When they don't understand, guide them. You have to mentor the people that work with you. Mm-hmm. You have to guide them. You have to hold their hand. And then you have to push them into the world. I learned, I've learned the hard way. And and the, I was going to say that your employee's <laughs> story sounds like a fairy tale. Because a lot of us who are entrepreneurs yeah. who are managing business yeah. and all the ladies who have had on my yeah. couch yeah. have talked about the major problem with the capacity yes. with the employees. Yes. So, are you saying you haven't faced so, any of those issues? I have faced, who ha- I mean, it should we, be, we, be worse. We face it every time. But one, one thing that okay. I think that has helped me is I am, I'm, I'm not very quick to discard people. Okay. I'm very slow, particular about okay. making sure that I've done all that I can to help someone to get to their potential, unless you don't want to. I've not, it, it takes me a while to sack fire people, people. Okay. but sometimes it, there's the good and the bad but the, what I always say is that that tolerance that being patient, patient that okay. teaching because sometimes some people don't know have I taught you enough that you, maybe because I didn't teach you properly that's why you don't know maybe you're not exposed enough maybe you know some people are outright bad though. there's nothing you yeah. can do about that <laughs> so you let them go but you have to just look I know people that started out Yes, when they started at the beginning, I know people have been there for 10 years now, 12, 15. When they started, they were like novices, greenhorns. Mm-hmm. People who had told me, so for some people, let them go, sack them. Why are you keeping them? Mm-hmm. Oh, this happened. I said, I don't know what I see in this person. But all I need to do is understand this person's strength. How can I begin to build on the strength? This person has yeah, maybe the capacity yeah. to be calm. I'm not as calm as this person should be. This person should I be the calm that. face. Yes. This person has, is very good with um, maybe attention to detail. So this I one is very good. see the good in them. The good. 
and be capitalized, capitalized and, build. and build. So that's what I thought. Of course, there are people that have left. There are people that I mean, I remember when even in the early days, when people would leave, I was very. I used to be very bitter. Thank I used you. to be. Now you're I used talking. to be. Yes. Are you? Oh. Here. Yes. You're so thinking you, we've tried so I've, much. I've trained you, sir. So you came here and I'm mean train you. Hey. Why would you leave? Exactly. Why but would I you said, leave me? Exactly. But you see, that's why I always say that. In, you know, it's like marriage mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, or exactly. even as, as you grow up. Maturity. As you begin to grow in life. You know, you yeah. become, you, you get mature. Yeah. You begin to maturity understand. Maturity gives you that perspective and patience. Exactly. And then the approach. Some will come and they Exactly. And then emotional intelligence is not, thank you. Not it's not about you. It's about what they want. It's about their own values. It's about you know any what at any you know even their path in life. Yeah. It's about their path in life. I remember one of my team members who recently had to relocate after thirteen years, Ooh. and I cried. I cried because I thought, what am I going to do? Thirteen years. I don't know what you have been with me. <laughs> oh, 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 but I knew that life. He needed to go. But you know, even he when he sent me a message. He doesn't even know how his life... That was his first place he ever worked. He, he doesn't know anything else. Ah. So he was like, he himself, I said, but you know what? This is You'll life. You'll be okay. You'll be fine. You know, so all these things happen. Mm. And I've realized also, of course, to build people up, you know, always have ensure that you have different people at different times and different yeah. paths and, you know, yeah. things like that. So, yeah, that's it. Interesting. Thank you so much for that. And I hope viewers, you've had all her tips. You have to build, build, build. And it's not all about you. Mm-hmm. Especially entrepreneurs, when people leave you, it's always not about you. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of reasons that they leave and you just have to allow them to go. But try your best to give, make them okay while they're yes. with you and happy. Yes. And of course, good enough to be able to deliver mm-hmm. the work. Okay, Funke, I know you must have gone through a lot of challenges in your business. Can you share with us one or two of the examples of something really very painful that you have had to go through or challenges you have had to go through that people can learn from? Okay. So, you know, at every, at every point in any business, you, you face different challenges, as you said. So either you're facing the challenge, I know we've discussed the challenge of you, people. people. You know, that's one challenge when people, you know, leave or you've had to let people go or, you know, so that's one challenge. Another challenge is the challenge of even difficult clients. Wow. Clients that you don't, both of you don't even just understand each other and they just think you're not the right fit. When is a good time to let those kind of clients go? We've, 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 turned, we've actually very recently, in the last three years, had to go back to a client and say we can't work with them. Just because I noticed that we're not just the right fit. Okay. Very difficult, but we just had to say, you know what, we'll give you back your and money. And you tried everything. And we, yes, and we return the money. So sometimes you're not the right fit. And it has happened even years ago. I remember one client as well, you know, said, oh, you know what, this is not working. And... In fact, because you know what, not every client is your client. That's number one. Number yes. two, our work is about people management. So you have to ensure that you're managing people properly. And but yes, but there's some people that you can't manage. You know, like so. You just you know what? Let's leave. Now another challenge that we face is we've had challenges where we've done an event, we've planned an event, it just didn't go well. Hmm. According to so there, you see, there are different ways it, an event may not go. To your, according to either to our standard or even according to the client, but it was not even our fault. So I remember we had an event one time. The client had asked that she wanted like this um, six course meal. Okay. The client is very, 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 um, I would say, traditional in their family. And I said to her, "Why should we do a six course meal? I don't think it's going to work for your crowd." She said, "You know what? You know what? That's what I want." On the day of the event, the crowd did not understand the meal. Oh, where's our banga? Where's our wo? Where's our karaka? Where's our this? Chu 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 pu pu pu. I can't. They did not eat the food. And you had actually advised yes. her guests would yes. not like the food. But you know what? As so after the event, she was very upset that with you know. You yeah, she was upset with us because she too. felt she felt that maybe the food you know were the ones that didn't serve the food well you know whatever. Anyway, you know what I did? I learned from another planner. An international planner who's been in business for about 30 years who said something like this happened, and do you know what he did? He just went to give the client flowers. So, you know what I did? I just wrote a note. I said, I'm so sorry this didn't go as well as you know you thought. We apologize and you know, thank you so much for trusting us. We did four events for that family after that. Wow, we did four events so just by giving flowers, just by and doing that. That was an advice and from somebody, else, somebody else who has done this before. That is it. So, wow. we've, I mean, those kind of challenges come, but there have been times that. Even when that happened and the event didn't go well, we didn't, we didn't repair the relationship. 
So it's not every time you're going to be able to repair a relationship when something doesn't go well in the in your work. And should be should be able to accept that. Accept that. that. And know that you know when you tried all you can. I remember one other event we did where it didn't something didn't go well. I'm, I I mean so the bride was happy, the groom was happy, her dad wasn't happy, and the dad thought, oh my God, these guys didn't do a good job. The bride became our best friend. A few years later. The man forgave us and we became his best friend again. <laughs> so maybe what I'm just trying to say is that there's, that's why I talk about mistakes. You can, you can, there's a plan. You know, as an event person, you are a crisis manager. You're a risk manager. Yes, yes. You are someone that has to ensure that you're managing vendors, you're managing clients, you're managing people, your yes. team. Mm-hmm. So you're managing everybody. Yes. Then you are now dealing with diplomacy. You are dealing with technology. So you're always negotiating ah, yeah, at God. every point in time. Every, there's something <laughs> that you are doing. But of course, maybe along the way, you may make something may happen that is yes. beyond your yes. control. Yes. Beyond your control. So that's why I always say, always plan, plan, plan. We've done an event before. We had two generators. Two. This was plan, you know, plan A, play a generator. They both broke down. Wow. What will I do now? They both broke down. I just looked. I said, ah, God. I went into prayer. Okay, but I remember, one, ah, I remember one. Let me tell you another one. <laughs> we had gotten, we had rented a Rolls Royce for one of our brides. This Rolls Royce and Bentley. <laughs> it had worked. So from morning to night. We now got to the location. It was now time to go and carry Maybe the bride somewhere. Uh-huh. The car refused to start. Wow. My sister. I went around the car and I said, I pray. Ah, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. This car will hurt. Father, this car will not disgrace me. Can you go? Anyway, to God be the glory. The guy, just, the guy just came and said, I think we should try this. Boom. The car said, I said, hey. Wow. God, thank you. Thank you. No disgrace. But what but am I saying? There's a lot of pressure in you. It's a lot of pressure. Job. It's a lot of pressure. Because you're taking everything. You are like, you must have the ability to take it all in. Mm. Because they are relying on you for yeah. everything. So it's, that's why it's important to build capacity, build you resilience, build your mental health and your strength. It's so important. So challenges will come. So all that has come, even in the event space, challenges have come, even generally, life. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, planning. I remember when I, my sister passed, at a point I just didn't want to even do anything anymore. But thank God for a great team that stood up. At that time, to ensure that everything went well. So challenges, you will always have challenges. I mean, in fact, there's the challenge of growth, challenge of even competition. You know, I'm in an industry where, as I said, I mean, I'm 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 older now. When I started, I was very young, and I was, as I said, I was planning events for my friends. Now you're in a place where they are now every generation. Yes, the events industry is has changed. Huge. So what do you do? How do you keep on, you know, making sure that you're relevant? Waiting, that is why waiting. you must keep your eye on the ball. Mm-hmm. That making sure that trends, you don't lose sight of trends. trends. Making sure that you know you are you 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 know that branding. You know, even for me in the, in the last few years, you know, I was very I'm very conservative. I was a certain way. You couldn't catch me wearing trainers or sneakers. But now, if my children, <laughs> because of them, I'm not wearing. Sneakers. I said, oh yeah, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> because they just want to just blend. You have to. Uh, anything they want that it takes to, to be exactly, to business. Exactly. To do so you know that reinvention, that rebranding, teaching, you know, doing I have a conference I do for event entrepreneurs from all over yes. Africa. Oh, yes. yes. You know, so things like that. So challenges will come. You know, there are times that you will you will you the one with your team. You know, you're not gonna have a very good great relationship every time. time. Yes. You know, how do you also build that? So there are many in fact if I if I sit here and tell you stories, we'll not pressure. finish. Because pressure. that pressure has a lot to do with your mental health as well as yes. your physical health. Yes. And I've seen that in this industry, there's a need to keep that intact. Yes. So wh- how, how do I do that? So for me, what I do is, I, I because first of all, my personality is very fluid, ju- jovial. jovial. I am, you know me, energetic. So nothing can get me down. If, ah, no, there's nothing. So that's real to the core. It's real, nothing in this life. If, <laughs> if, if, even if one day, except maybe the only time that I know that this, I was really down a bit was when my sister passed. Mm. And honestly, that one was so because my dad had passed the year before, then my sister died yeah. the year after. Mm. And we're just two children. Sorry. Do you understand what I mean? So that one hits me because I was very angry that how can my sister go and die? You know, that kind of thing. So I nearly got into a, a dark place at that time. But that was the only time I can say the years since I've been young. You know how, but we all yeah. it. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. You know, so uh, the, uh, the ability to always draw inspiration, you know, to make sure that you don't get yourself, 
you know, too pressured and stressed? What are your triggers? So when I see that I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, I mean, in the last week, remember, I was supposed to do this a few days yes, ago, but I, I couldn't do it. I was feeling overwhelmed, yeah. blah, 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 blah. I have to say, you know what? I can't do this. So learning to say no. no. <laughs> Me of before, uh, I will find my way here. Yes, I will not be able to not concentrate. <laughs> but learning to say no, learning to understand your your capacity. You know the things that you know are triggers. You know, so maybe oh, you know what? I need to take a bit of a day off. You know, guys, I need. Can I just? shut down for a bit and and I tell my team as well you know what you need to take some time off do you know how you feeling I noticed today that you seemed a bit down Mm -hmm. what's going on you know are you is the work overwhelmed okay you know what let's take a few don't come to work for the next three days go and relax Mm -hmm. work will wait for you you know that kind of thing also recognizing that in my team recognize I didn't before in the early stages because passion blinded my eyes the work everything was about the work thank you that's the truth and that's exactly exactly and and I think one of the things I also want to add is that and I don't know I mean but one of the things I want to add is the power of people when I say people I'm talking about even just getting people that are your friends the network of people that encourage you, mm. that also are there to support so like you, mentors, mentors coaches, yeah. friends, people that hold your hands. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, someone that you can call to say, I am feeling overwhelmed, I need help. Someone that can pray with you, someone that can, you can that give you advice. Mm. Oh, right now, I'm not sure what's going on, I don't know what I need to do. You, with the power of network, you know, we must never network lose sight of that. Network. That is it. Very so well. that has really helped me. So that, that, that helps me. You know, when I'm under pressure, I'm feeling overwhelmed, you know, the work is a bit too much. I have people, you know what, I call people, mm. talk to people, relax, do whatever I need. To. If I have to go and watch TV from morning to night, oh, I like my <laughs> shows, I will watch it. If I need to just sleep, I will sleep. <laughs> yes, 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 I'll do that. Well done, well done, Funke. Yes. 20 years, yes. that is not a small feat at all. We Thank are you. so happy and excited that you're actually keeping yourself and making your work relevant. Thank you. And I love all the things you say you have talked about. I'm sure our viewers also enjoyed it too. But what what would you tell our viewers who are watching us today? Mm. What steps? Just advise them. If they want to start this business or they're already in the business mm-hmm. in one year, two years, what should they be mindful of? Okay. I love. I I I, I just love. I, I don't know. You know, can you can notice that when I'm yes. I'm always so happy. Yes, I said. Yeah, because I just love I, you know I, 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 I love that. When I was younger you know, I I didn't have many Anybody people to, tell, to yeah, really tell me many years. things, right? So when I can have the opportunity, I'm always happy to do so. So I would say that the first thing is be clear about what you want to do. Mm. Have clarity of mind. Be clear. Now, you may not be clear. It's not easy to be clear at the beginning. Clear. Yes, yeah. but you just know what you don't want. So be clear about the things you, you want. want now look for how you can now you know, fill the gaps of what you need. So look at the gaps in your business, even in your personal life. What are the things that that you need to actually fill the gaps? You know, like maybe, uh, for example, oh, you don't know how to. So I'll give myself as an example. I was someone that, you know, because I was so passionate, I would give feedback maybe in a very harsh way because I just thought, why don't you know what you're doing? I had to go and learn emotional intelligence. I had to give feedback by, first of all, making the person feel good. Then you give them the... The feedback the that you need to give them, <laughs> that kind of thing. Father, yes. So learning, even giving the feedback anyway. Uh-huh. So just learning, exactly. you know, the, your skill gaps. Yes. What are the things you need to learn? Do you need to go and learn technology? Do you need to go and learn how to, you know, finance? Okay. What are the things? Always, never think you know it all. Always self-develop. So that's one thing I would tell somebody else. To someone, build capacity. you know, build, build your capacity. capacity. Always develop yourself. Look at all the things that you need to do to get your business to the next level. Yeah. Then. Identify your client. Everybody mm-hmm. at every point in our business, always keep on looking at your clients change. The persona of your clients will change. You know, there may be a certain way this time. The things they like. Always do your research. The dynamic. Yes, yeah. you must research. Search your clients. Yes, research. Mm-hmm. Continue to research in your space. What is new? What is trendy? Who are my clients? What are the new things that are out there? What is the technology that I need to use for my business? Keep on doing that. You know, which is why self-develop. Stay humble. Stay hungry. Especially in the agency. Yes, stay yes. humble. Yeah, humble. yeah, yeah. Humility ah, is Just stay humble. There's so need. I'm telling you. And you staying humble doesn't mean you are stupid. No, no, no. It doesn't no. mean that you are you are just uh, uh, they are just Foolish, eating yeah. you anyhow. No. <laughs> just stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Make sure that you are you are constantly self developing. Ask questions. 
We don't know it all. Ask questions. Always ask. Don't be shy. You know, I always tell people, I ask questions. My office, I, I'm, I'm the oldest in my office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm surrounded by young people. I will ask them questions. Uh, excuse me. How do you do this? Yeah. What do you think I should do? The greatest leaders learn from everybody. Ask questions. Mm-hmm. So always ask questions. Then build your craft. Perfect your crafts. Make sure that you do all that you can to hone and build your craft. So make sure that every at any opportunity you are developing your business before you go into the packaging. Because the packaging now, very packaging. You see some people their class is very big, but the packaging is great. Yes. Oh. Uh-uh. <laughs> yes, the packaging is great. You yes, understand? No yes. You understand? There's no content. So, there's, no depth. there's no depth. <laughs> Let me have depth yes. because when the wind is coming well, like this, it will shake show. you. So build depth. <laughs> I yes. love what I like that. So build that. Build, you know, hone your craft. Build your craft. Be so good at what you do yes. that when they are looking for who for that, it's you they will look for. Do you understand what I'm doing? It's very Oprah important. Said, right, out fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I think those are some of the things I would say. I mean, there are a lot more, but, you know, even find, you know, learn how to build resilience. Resilience, tenacity. Mm-hmm. You know, things will come. Yes. Life will shake, shake you. you. Ah! There'll be days you'll not have money. There'll be days there'll be no clients. Oh. There'll be those days. What are you going to do? In those times, do, do something. Learn something. Build something. Whenever there's a chance to learn, I always say that anytime there's a challenge, there's a mistake, there's a failure, it's an opportunity to, to learn. learn. What did I learn from it? Every time I've had a challenge, I sit down and say, what can I learn? What should I be learning from this? What can I use this for the next thing to be better? Mm. That is how it is. So you must always look for the good in all those challenges and areas that you have. And know that it will pass. Everything it will pass. pass. <laughs> it's just for <laughs> a short time. period. <laughs> it will pass. Okay. But you know, so those kind of things. And there are many more. But yeah. I mean, those are just some of the things that we want to tell anyone. I want to go into this event industry. Interesting. You know, and I'm sure yes. they've said so much. Okay, you mean you've been married with two beautiful daughters. How have you been able to manage your business as well as the home front? <laughs> Especially with the fact that you travel a lot and you have to be at different locations at night and all those things. So how do you manage the, the, the business? So, I mean, no, I, I, when I say that um, it's from mentors and the learning, I, I, I also look at people. I, I observe, you know, people that are also busy like me. And I say, and I look at how they've been able to juggle it. And, you know, it's, it's this thing about integration. How do you, you know, integrate? So it's about making sure that the things I can delegate, I delegate. Um, Was that the same thing when, I mean, when you started the business? Yes. Have you always done that? I've always done it. So right from the beginning, I knew what my, my life would be like. So I already saw it, and what I just said to myself is, I need to ensure that I learn how to manage this. So I ensure that even the, when at home, the people that you know delegate and help with all the things, I make sure that they are well treated. I mean, my my the, my children. I mean, well, I won't say nanny. She's now housekeeper, house manager. She's been with us for fourteen years. You wow. Know? So fourteen years. Our drivers, all those. You know that oh, home, they've been there for over ten years. You know, so because I, I just make sure that you know what these guys are very important as well. I need them as well as I'm managing the team at work. These guys too. So that delegation, ensuring that there's a lot of sacrifice. So what do I mean? So there are times I have to maybe I'm, I'm done at night, maybe four a.m., three a.m. I still have to be maybe in school at six a.m. to do something. Then I have to travel, come back. I, I do what I can wow. as much as possible, you know, and then of course very being very intentional. So it's been intentional from the very beginning. You know, what is the thing that I want to get from my home? What are the things that I want to make sure? So that balance is not easy. There are times that work is on this level, home is here. There are times it's like this. So it's the key thing is just to recognize, you know, and not beat yourself up too much when maybe you didn't do well in one area. I mean, well, even if you don't do well, how can you correct it? So I keep on saying the power of people. The time that somebody can help you pick up your child from somewhere ask them to help you don't feel shy now don't say please help me now what if you don't have the people too? Ah, well me i have the people i mean yeah, ah, i built people. me i built network <laughs> I have the, but even if you can't because there are people that yes. genuinely can't yeah, exactly. the king, i always say that sometimes as much as well carry them with you carry them with you i, you, I carry my, I, my my second child i bre- i mean i was breastfeeding my two children i would carry them to events i carry them with me 
to Abuja, to everywhere. I carry them or I carry them. Maybe I'll go check them in the corner, put them in a, in a particular room on the side.、Mm. But I, I, I did carry them with me. And as they're older now, you know, they're older now, they are teenagers, you know, it's now, but now it's even more important because as teenagers, you also、yeah. want to be in their lives.、Exactly. So, how do you also do that? So, sometimes you are doing like 100 things in a day. Just to ensure that you are you know, available、all、for the children that, all, the all the time. You know, that kind of thing. And even with my husband, thank God my husband is very understanding. Ah, very understanding. That one, I, I pray, I said, God, my husband must be understanding. He must be understanding. He must understand what I do. So God brought him my way. So he's very understanding, you know, helps to manage. So you you're lucky、okay、with your spouse,、yes, with the support system,、yes. and everyone around you.、System. Yes. Yes, yes. Well done. Well done. I've enjoyed this interview. This is what I do. Thank you, Mr. Sir. I would have had fun, e f o r energy. Well done, well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Well done. My life. Hey! To you, my. Hey! 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 Tonight, hey, meet my guy. Yeah, with my guy. Hey, hey, come on. Hey, 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 h